पार्टिसिपेंट कनेक्ट होता है हो हो सर चैट मध्य यूट्यूब ची लिंक पाठली ओके ओके यस डॉक्टर को एक वीडियो ऑन करा ना मैं एक घतो हाँ एक फोटो घत फ ओके सर डन बोलले सर निसर्गाच्या सानिध्यात हो जरा समाधी बॅकग्राऊंड चेंज करतायच ना हा बॅकग्राऊंड चेंज करतायच आम्हाला असं वाटलं कोल्हे सर बॅकग्राऊंड चेंज केली म्हणून चालेल करायच सुरू शुभ्या मॅडम युजर सर आर यू रेडी चालू करायचं आपण हो चालेल वीस एकवीस लोक आहेत अजून जॉईन होतील नंतर येस चालू करायचंय येस चालेल तीन पस्तीस ते चालू करूयात दोन तीन मिनिट थांबू अजून ओके सर दोन तीन मिनिट अजून थांबते पस्तीस चालू करू आपण काय पण चांगले लेक्चर झाले जीपे चे रोज चे आम्ही अटेंड करतो अधून मधून चांगलं येत आणि ऑनलाईन असल्यामुळे सर जागेवर असून करता येतं त्याच्यामुळे ड्रायव्हर असतो मागे बघता येतं आणि खूप चांगले लेक्चर्स आहेत सगळे इव्हन वगैरे पण खूप सध्याच्या उपयोगाचे आहेत हो 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 सगळेच उपयोगाचे आहेत बरोबर आहे आपण म्हणतो टॉपिक रिलेव्हंट असले तर थोडस इंटरेस्ट पण येतो सर अजून एक्सरसाइज वरती झाला परवाच स्ट्रेस मॅनेजमेंट वरती बघा सर कुठे मिळाल तर कोण बोलणार असेल तर स्ट्रेस मॅनेजमेंट कोविड स्ट्रेस इन कोविड आपण काय करावं स्ट्रेस जनरल डॉक्टरांसाठी गरजच आहे सध्या स्ट्रेस मॅनेजमेंट आणि एक्सरसाइज वरती झाला आम्हाला घेऊन नाही नाही खूप होत योगा एक्सरसाइज आणि स्ट्रेस मॅनेजमेंट कारण आता कोविड मध्ये सगळ्यांना कळालंय की इम्पॉर्टंट प्रायोरिटीज हेल्थ बाकी काही सगळं दुय्यम आहे मी रोज किती पेशंट बघता किती काम करता बारा तास काम करता सोळा तास काम करता इज ऑल सेकंडरी युअर हेल्थ इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट त्यामुळे लोक जरा कॉन्शियस झाले आहेत हेल्थ कॉन्शियस झाली आहेत थोडस स्वतःला वेळ द्यायला लागली आहे फॅमिलीला वेळ द्यायला लागली आहेत नंतर आपले डॉक्टर सदान कदा सकाळी आठ वाजता चालू आलं की रात्री बारा पर्यंत कामच चालू असतात बरोबर त्यामुळे थोडस हे सगळं महत्वाचं आहे सगळेच सुपर स्पेशलिस्ट घ्या आम्ही घ्या सगळेच जनरल प्रॅक्टिशनरलाही पेशंट कुठे ऍडमिट असेल त्याला बघायला जा बघायला जावं लागतं बॉन्डिंग असतात त्यामुळे असं सोडून सोडून देता येत नाही सर फिटनेस ही अशी गोष्ट आहे ना की द पर्सन शुड बी सेल्फ मोटिवेटेड कोणी सांगून ते होत नाही आपण पटवून देऊ की एव्हरीबडी नोज इव्हन डॉक्टर्स नो व्हॉट इज द इम्पॉर्टन्स ऑफ फिटनेस बट द पर्सन शुड बी सेल्फ मोटिवेटेड आपली मित्र वगैरे करायला लागले ना की आपण करतो एक्सरसाइज हा बाबा दहा पैकी चार जण करतात एक्सरसाइज स्वतः वेळ देत आहेत की माणूस हळूहळू हळूहळू स्टार्ट थिंक ही स्टार्ट थिंकिंग आणि ग्रॅज्युएट डाऊन द लाईन थ्री मंथ सिक्स मंथ वन इयर पण बरं कारण आम्हाला रिव्ह्यूज येतात ना मोटिवेशनल किंवा जे काही आपले सिरीज चालू आहेत त्याच्याने खूप जणांमध्ये फरक पडलाय म्हणजे दे हॅव स्टार्टेड म्हणजे बिगनर्स मध्ये पण खूप वाढ झालेली आहे बिकॉज ऑफ द मोटिवेशन थॉट फॉर थिंकिंग फूड फॉर थिंकिंग बाबा असं होऊ शकतं एवढी काम करायची गरज नाहीये किंवा गरज नाहीये हे आपल्याला नंतर कळतं हळूहळू आणि एक्सरसाइज एक गोष्ट चांगली इट इज नेवर टू लेट यु कॅन एनी टाईम एनी वे नाही आता मी काही पेशंट बघतो ना जे सेवन्टी एज आहेत सेवन्टी फोर एज आहेत त्यांना डायबिटीज बीपी काही नाही ना एकदम फिट आहेत बरोबर जे कोविडमध्ये वाचलेत किंवा कोविड होऊन गेला किंवा नाही झालेला आहे 
आणि त्यामुळे ना घरच्यांचाही घरचे म्हणतात की माझ्या आई वडिलांना काही नाही मला खूप काही बघावं लागत नाही डायबिटीस नाही बी पी नाही कोविड झाले नाही एम आय नाही काही नाही हॉस्पिटलचा चक्र मारा लागत नाही म्हणजे ओव्हरऑल सगळे फॅमिली बेनिफिट होते ते पण खूप महत्वाचं आहे माधुरी एकच मिनिट फक्त बोलू नका लेक्चर चालू करू सर गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल आय डॉक्टर शुभदास जोशी वेलकम यू अगेन इन अ व्हेरी एक्सायटिंग सेशन बाय आर ओन फॅमिली कार्डिओलॉजिस्ट डॉक्टर हसमुख गुजर सो बिफोर वी प्रोटोकॉल जीपीए प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर शिवाजी कोल्हे टू सेफ्टी टू यू कोल्हे सर गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल जीपीए च्या आफ्टरनून स्टडी सर्कल मध्ये सगळ्यांचं स्वागत जीपीए गेल्या चार वर्षापासून स्टडी सर्कल प्रोग्राम राबवत आहे डॉक्टर हसमुख गुजर हे त्याचे दरवर्षी पाठ होत आहेत प्रत्येक स्टडी सर्कल मध्ये सरांचा तेवढाच किरारीने सहभाग असतो टीचिंग करण्याचा सरांना नेहमीच आदर आहे म्हणजे रिस्पेक्ट आहे की सर एवढ्या त्यांच्या बिडी बिझी शेड्यूल मधून सुद्धा वेळ काढून आपल्यासाठी टीचिंग साठी येत आहेत तर खरंच आय सॅल्यूट टू डॉक्टर हसमुख गुजर सर आजच्या स्टडी सर्कल मध्ये सर तुमचं स्वागत थँक यू ऑल थँक यू कोलू सर वी आर व्हेरी लकी टू हॅव हसमुख गुजर सर विथ अस अँड स्पेशली इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सिरीज सो टुडे सर्स टॉपिक इज बेसिक्स ऑफ अँटीप्लेटलेट्स अँड अँटीकोएगुलेट्स इट्स व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट फॉर फॅमिली फिजिशियन टू नो द बेसिक्स थिंग्स Uh, so to introduce sir uh, i uh, today's our moderator is dr prasad soni uh, dr prasad soni is BA, bams and pg dgm he is practicing at vadra uh, vadgaon budruk since 20 years uh, he is a trustee and medical of spandan care center uh, actually this spandan care center is specially for the old bedridden people he is a past president of pune sihagad road doctors association uh, so to proceed with the lecture i request dr prasad soni uh, i hand over the charge to dr prasad soni uh, thank you dr shubhada madam for the introduction and uh, i am chairing the session for the gpa after a very long time so it just like a homecoming uh so thank you very much dr shivaji kolle dr shubhada madam for giving this giving this opportunity to me to chair the session and uh, the today's topic uh, the platelets and the anticoagulants it's a very uh, very uh, this topic is very close to the general practitioners uh, as uh, uh, we are always in a dilemma what to use and in the covid cases actually we are really in a dilemma that uh, some doctors are prescribing equosprin some doc- doctors are prescribing rivaroxaban and this and to elaborate on this confusion what exactly we should do uh, today we have a prolific speaker uh, with us uh, dr hasmukh guzar sir and uh, dr hasmukh guzar sir when i went through his uh, cv uh, actually the most of the speakers are uh, they have a uh, practicing and consultants here and there but the one thing that that strike in uh, while I, i i went through the uh, this cv that uh, sir is a researcher sir is a scientific a scientist by uh, nature and uh, so he has presented many papers and in the national international journals and uh, th- this is a unique uh, ability of the sir now uh, let me introduce the uh, hasmukh gujar sir uh, the dr hasmukh gujar is a he is a dnb medicine uh, from uh, Pune Hospital and Research Center and to, in, uh, he has done it in 2005 and he has done the DNP cardiology uh, from the same institute in 2010 uh, he has presented a paper at the 13th uh, annual national conference of india uh, college of cardiology held at the khajurao mp uh, the topic of that uh, paper was study of differences in the severity of the coronary artery angiographic abnormalities in diabetes and non diabetic patients and this study was conducted on a very large scale that is 800 patients so he has also presented the paper at the 50th annual conference uh, in cardiology society of india held at new delhi in december 2006 and the topic was influence of the smoking on the angiographic abnormalities in the coronary and the renal angiography uh, this is a i think uh, my suggestion over uh, to the organizers is that see he has already presented the paper on this and we can also organize a lecture of sir uh, on these topics also because he must be having a very deep uh, knowledge and uh, regarding this so it's a kind of just a suggestion uh, he was uh, he was also a code investigator co investigator in the phase 3 study indication uh, that is uh, chronic stable angina and 
in year 2010 and 2011. Uh, he was a sub investigator in phase 3 study in the diabetes in year 2011 and 2012 uh, presently sir is consultant at uh, many hospitals uh, inamdar hospital puno hospital ruby hall clinic uh, nobel hospital and dindar hospital so with this brief introduction uh, i request uh, dr uh, hasmuk guzar sir to begin his speech thank you thank you gp and uh, thank you prasad sir for the introduction so let's proceed with the talk i should i share my screen or it is already there oh uh, no so you need to share the screen so just share the screen screen it started yes yeah yeah can you see the full screen yes sir yes sir so today Uh, it's very basic topic of what is what are antiplatelets, what is anticoagulant, what is the difference between that? Because this topic I uh, have taken maybe one or two years back also, and maybe in some other forum. This is because normally I get a phone call that uh, the patient is on anticoagulant. This patient is on anticoagulant clopidogrel. This patient is on anticoagulant aspirin. This is an anticoagulant ticagrelor. So. first uh, it is it should be very clear that two drugs two category of drugs antiplatelets and anticoagulants they are totally different category see here is a some basic things which we have studied in first year of our uh, uh, college first year of mbbs and bhms bms first year of graduation the basic difference between what is the basic difference between antiplatelets and anticoagulation that should be very clear to us so we know this there is a coagulation cascade uh, which includes extrinsic part and intrinsic part we have not taken into details because of we should not be into confusion i don't know why this is uh, there is a coagulation cascade and an antiplatelets platelets these two are the two different groups coagulation cascade includes extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway we start from factor 7 because of extrinsic tissue damage intrinsic pathway starts because of some endothelial damage it activates factor 12 to factor 12a then it converts factor 11 to 11a then it converts it activates factor 10 to factor 10a hmm? so ultimately in coagulation cascade it may be extrinsic pathway or intrinsic pathway there is activation of factor 10a which uh, activates thrombin that is factor 10a is thrombin this thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin and this fibrin helps in the formation of clot so ultimately why we are discussing this anticoagulants and antiplatelets the main thing is to prevent clot formation so this clot formation can result in myocardial infarction can result in stroke can result in peripheral vascular disease which is very important clot very important for cardiovascular purpose for stroke and for peripheral vascular disease as well so ultimate our aim is to prevent this clot formation so how this clot is formed this clot is formed by two way one is by coagulation cascade coagulation system and one is by platelets aggregation of platelet system so we have seen this coagulation cascade which includes extrinsic and intrinsic pathway ultimately into activation of thrombin conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin and ultimate clot formation and now if you see platelets we'll go in detail of platelets what are platelets and uh, what is the mechanism of action This platelets because of various collagen and other mediators because of thromboxane because of ADP and because of thrombin also these platelets get activated. These activated platelets get aggregated. This aggregation of platelets of activated platelets which results in clot formation. So clot, what is clot? It is a mixture of platelet aggregation, platelet clump, as well as fibrin. This fibrin holds the platelet together. So the, the various drugs. antiplatelet drugs and antithrombotic or anticoagulant drugs ultimately acts to prevent clot formation ultimately we give this to prevent clot formation so coming to first coagulation cascade first we have vitamin k antagonist warfarin and acetone which acts on various factors that we will discuss which are found in the liver then factor 10a is inhibited by factor 10a inhibitors and there are direct thrombin inhibitors this vitamin k antagonist factor 10a inhibitors and direct thrombin inhibitors this acts on coagulation system coagulation cascade to prevent clot formation so these are called as anticoagulant the drugs which acts on coagulation system which various factors of coagulation system may be fibrinogen thrombin 
फैक्टर टेन है और अदर फैक्टर्स फैक्टर्स फाइव सेवन थ्री विद विच वर्फर एन एक्ट द ड्रग्स विच एक्ट ऑन एनी ऑफ द कोशन फैक्टर आर कॉल एस एंटी कोग्रेन दिस इज द ड्रग्स मॉलिक्यूलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिलोग्रिल
रिमूव द बार्क ऑफ द बिलोज झाडाचे ते बार्क काढायचे आणि त्यापासून इट दे यूज टू डेव्हलप सम पेन किलर मेडिसिन इन पावडर फॉर्म ऑन लिक्विड फॉर्म दॅट वॉज इन हिपोक्रॅट हिपोक्रॅट इज नोन टू अस ही इज नोन एज फादर ऑफ मेडिसिन hippocrat in that century they used to remove the bark of the pillows bilos bilos is the name of a tree which is found in european countries there's a bark kadun the anti uh, inflammatory drug tayar karayche in that century then after so many years in 19 1897 in 1890s this felix hoffman he is an uh, german scientist he developed aspirin in drug form in powder form and now it is available by bear, bear. there was a bear company in german that developed aspirin and this is the felix hoffman is the scientist who first developed aspirin in powder form and then in 1900 the world started using widely as an anti inflammatory drug as an anti pain killer drug aspirin but in 1971 1960s and 70s sir john wen he is a british pharma, uh, pharmacologist who brought the theory of aspirin as an anticoagulant drug aspirin as an anti inflammatory drug as well as anticoagulant drug so these names are very important for us, us considering aspirin as a molecule so mosses are uh, european or german philosophers as mosses receiving the tablets from the god the aspirin was god that time. aspirin drug which was developed molecule which was developed it was like a god it was an anti inflammatory drug which was used for almost all type of painkillers like a painkiller so aspirin was then available in bottle form in a powder form so that would have been bottle again here there is a bear company showing aspirin which can be used for cold neuritis to fix neuralgias headache lumbago rheumatism one of the main indication and for any kind of pain and that time it was thought that aspirin affects the heart it causes damage to the heart but but later on it was found out that aspirin is very useful to heart so what is the mechanism of aspirin this membrane phospholipid by some extrinsic or intrinsic pathway get activated which activates arachidinic acid this arachidinic acid with the help of cox cox cyclooxygenase is one enzyme uh, activates prostaglandin h2 prostaglandin h2 then activates thromboxane a2 and prostacyclin thromboxane a2 is a very potent platelet aggregator as well as vasoconstrictor what do, what does aspirin do aspirin inhibits this enzyme it is a cox1 inhibitor cyclooxygenase one inhibitor therefore it reduces formation of prostaglandin h2 and subsequently formation of thromboxane 2 and subsequently decrease in platelet aggregation so aspirin is a cox1 inhibitor that everybody knows just a revision for most of them now how does aspirin work for platelet aggregation platelet aggregation is a key mechanism in ather- atherosclerotic plaque formation and development of cv event low dose aspirin what we give at 75 mg or 100 mg per day therapy provides sustained inhibition of platelet aggregation and thromboformation hmm, is very important and it irreversibly binds to the platelet so is most important aspirin irreversibly this word is very important irreversibly acetylates the active site of cyclooxygenase which is an enzyme which is required for the production of thromboxane a2 a powerful promoter of platelet aggregation so aspirin irreversibly blocks acetylates the active site of cyclooxygenase like cox1 which is required for formation of thromboxane a2 and thus prevent platelet aggregation so aspirin in low dose given for a long time definitely helps in reducing the cv events as well as platelet aggregation coming to other antiplatelet drugs this is a very good chart see diclofenac we are not using it regularly as an uh, antiplatelet drug routinely because of it it is less potent less potent as compared to other drug aspirin we have seen it is called as acetylic acetyl salicylic acid active form of drug maintenance dose is 75 to 325 mg daily and it's an irreversible inhibitor reversibility no and clopidogrel we are using it daily it is a p2 vital receptor antagonist or adp receptor antagonist it is not an active drug it is a pro drug it is converted into liver into active drug 75 mg is a maintenance dose then there is another molecule called prasugrel prasugrel is a tablet which is to be used after angioplasty only so you will see prasugrel which is less prescribed only in patient who have undergone angioplasty otherwise you will not see this drug routinely in a prescription of a cardiologist again is a p2 vital inhibitor prasugrel 
it is a pro drug maintenance dose is 10 mg per day and ticagrelor is a p2 vital receptor antagonist this is the recent breakthrough we are using is most of the patients ticagrelor in post plastic conditions it can be used in myocardial infarction it can be used in unstable angina it can be used in non stimulation mi and it can be used post plastic ticagrelor is an active drug does not require conversion into active drug after uh, uh, consuming the tablet maintenance dose is 20 mg twice daily and it is reversible agent so once we stop the ticagrelor the action goes within maybe next two or three days so aspirin we know that it is acetyl salicylic acid Loprogrel, prasugulin, ticagrelor, these all are antiplatelet drugs. Not going to details of how much antiplatelet to give, but in a medically treated patient who is on stable coronary artery disease, give only, only one molecule, aspirin or clopidogrel, needs to be taken lifelong. And her patient has undergone, her patient of acute coronary syndrome, non stable non stimulation MI has been treated medically, both these drugs has been, the patient has got bare metal strength, dual antiplatelet should be given for one month, and the patient has drug eluting scent, dual antiplatelet, maybe you can give aspirin or clopidogrel, aspirin or ticagrelor or aspirin or prosugrel for 12 months. So if the patient has got angioplasty, has undergone angioplasty, at present, the guideline says that you give two drugs, two antiplatelets, aspirin maybe with clopidogrel, with prasugril or ticagrelor for at least one year. So, this is the summary of antiplatelets. Now, coming to anticoagulant, which is very important, there are some new anticoagulants which have come into market in the last three to four years, and you should know about it because they are used very routinely nowadays in the clinical practice. Now, coming to antiplatelets, we have finished. We have seen antiplatelets, which includes aspirin, ticlopidine, lopulogril, prasugril. And ticagrelor, and the other molecule which we have not discussed is GP2B3 inhibitors. That is usually used in IPD setting, and patient has gone ongoing chest pain, patient has gone ongoing stimulation MI, or this last thrombus burden while doing angioplasty. This GP2B3 inhibitors, like eftifibatide, which is available as tadafibane or agramate, we use in hospital settings. See, anticoagulant heparin, most commonly uh, most commonly used drug in IPD settings and in now this COVID era. Heparin, we know that it is an unfractioned heparin and vitamin K antagonist, as, uh, warfarin and acetrome, then low molecular weight heparin is unfractioned heparin and this is low molecular weight heparin and direct thrombin inhibitor that we'll see in detail which adds directly on thrombus, thrombin, factor it. Indirect thrombin inhibitors, which is a parental injection, can be used in cath lab. And then, so the development of anticoagulant is from 1930s. We first used only heparin, which are infection heparin, then developed vitamin K antagonist, then low molecular heparin, and then, then now we have. This oral direct thrombin inhibitors called of near not going to detail. Cyparin acts on anti thrombin 3 factor E, factor 2, N, and factor 2 in one is to one ratio. Anti thrombin 3 and uh, factor uh, 2 it is one to one ratio, factor 10, uh, factor 10 and factor 2 it is one to one ratio. And low molecular cyparin has major action on factor 10 A as compared to factor 2 A. This is the difference between unfection heparin and low molecular heparin. Low molecular heparin has action more on factor 10A as compared to factor 2, and heparin has a good action, uh, similar action on both the uh, molecules, both the factors. Direct thrombin inhibitor acts on uh, thrombin, which is a parental drug. Again, it is a parental drug, and these are oral direct uh, factor 10 inhibitors. So, we'll not going to details of heparin. See, basically, heparin has got action on thrombin. As well as factor 10a, well as low molecular weight heparin has got action on factor 10 and more as compared to thrombin. See, these are two apart. This is very close to each other. So low molecular weight heparin has got strong action on factor 10 as compared to thrombin, whereas heparin unfraction heparin has got action on both the factors equally. 
what are the drawbacks of this unstructured heparin or low molecular heparin? They have to be given parental administration. Monitoring and dose adjustment is required with unfractioned heparin. And there's always a risk of heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Vis a vis again with low molecular heparin, parental administration is important and weight adjustment is uh, dose adjustment is important according to weight. What is HIT, HIT? It is called as heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Usually, if somebody is given unfractioned heparin, we have to monitor his platelet count. Sometimes because of some immunological reaction, after giving unfractioned heparin, his platelet count may drop. It, it may drop from maybe 1 lakh, 50,000, 2 lakhs. It may drop to uh, maybe thousands, 10,000, 30,000, 20,000, 50,000 also. So if anybody is receiving unfractioned heparin, you should keep a watch on his platelet count. If the platelet counts come down, you have to stop heparin and give some other drugs. Warfarin, what is warfarin? It is a vitamin K antagonist. Vitamin K is required for factor 5, factor 7, factor 10, factor 9, factor 10, and factor 2. So, vitamin K is required for synthesis of this factor. So, warfarin is a vitamin K antagonist. So, what happened after giving warfarin? The synthesis of non functional coagulation factors occurs. So, factor 7, 9, 10, and 2. These factors are inhibited by warfarin which are vitamin K dependent factors. So what are the limitations of warfarin? Warfarin we are using since ages. We are using since many years at a time tested drug and still we are using, using in some conditions. What is the strength of warfarin? It is very effective. When the INR is well maintained, INR is between 2 or 2.5 or 2.5 and 3 as required. If the INR is very uh, well maintained, it is an effective drug. It is an oral drug. And there is a no risk of heparin induced thrombocytopenia, which occurs with unfection heparin. But what are the weakness of war? What are the side effects of weakness of war? Need, needs for correlation monitoring. We need to monitor INR regularly after every five or seven days. The slow run shot of action does not act immediately. Unpredictable and narrow therapeutic window. See, if a patient of wall has been given one, post wall replacement has been involved, his INR has to be maintained between 2 to 2.5. It's very narrow therapeutic index. If the INR comes to less than 1.5 or 1.7, there's always a risk of uh, wall thrombosis. If the INR is very high, there is a risk of bleeding. So very narrow therapeutic index and multiple food and drug interaction. So these are the weakness of warps. So real case scenario in real clinical for uh, uh, doctors to control the INR of the patient, very difficult. Only 35% of patients have only 35% has got time in therapeutic range of more than 70%. It means was just 56%. Under coagulated vitamin K under this patient, INR less than 2, they have a very high risk of thrombosis, maybe stroke or and if the TTR is less than 60, the incidence of stroke or uh, side effect is 1.6%. And if the TTR is more than 70, it is 0.5%. So, this TTR is important time in therapeutic range. Of the 10 PTR report, if the patient has got more than 7 PTR reports within the range, which is a 2 to 2.5, what is required, then the risk of side effects are very less. This is if the patient has got INR, which is very fluctuating, which is very less. If out of the 10 INR, 6 INR reports are out of the therapeutic range, then the risk of stroke or risk of systemic emulation is very on the higher side. So maintaining this INR is very cumbersome. We have to give work. We have to change that. If the INR is more, we have to stop the work for two days and restart it. There is a chart uh, which is available on the net. which shows that if the INR is more, uh, how to reduce work with INR is less and how to increase the work. So basically, it's very difficult to maintain INR in a clinical practice. So the development of NOAX, what are the advantages of NOAX? Faster onset of action, predictable anticoagulation, one of the most important thing with dwarf is there's a lot of drug interactions, a lot of food interactions. So with NOAX, there is 
reverse potential for drug and food interactions, no need for routine coagulation monitoring, no need for routine INR monitoring, simplified and fixed dose. With warp, I have to give from 2 milligram to 4 milligram, 5 milligram, then 7.5 milligram. Some patients may require 10 milligram also. So with this, they are with NOAX, fixed dose reading. It's very important. So because of all this, there's less lower impact on patient daily quality of life. If there's an improved quality of life and improved compliance, improved benefit to patient uh, risk profile. So definitely NOAX are very important, are beneficial or vitamin cantorous like water and acetone in management of patients with atrial fibrillation or DVD upon the hemorrhage. So what are the NOVAX? Which are the NOVAX? Newer oral anticoagulant. The older ones are warf and acetone and heparin and the different that we know. These are newer oral anticoagulants. What are they? Let's see. There are three newer oral anticoagulants. The fourth one is endoxoban, which is not available in India. Direct thrombin inhibitor, direct factor 10 inhibitors are reoroxiban and apexiban. And factor 2 inhibitor, which are thrombin inhibitor, is dabigatran. So these three molecules we should know. Dabigatran, which is available as maybe Pradex or Dabiglot or the Ramoni, many Indian Siban, it is Heralto and other companies have also come and Apexiban is Iliquis. So these three drugs, factor 10 inhibitor, or Reuroxiban and Apexiban and factor 2 inhibitor is Dabigatran. That should be very clear. This Dabigatran, Reuroxiban and Apexiban are newer oral anticoagulants. Ultimately, uh, there is inhibition of fibrin formation and inhibition of clot formation. So some basic things about these three molecules. See, Reuroxiban target is factor 10, Apexiban is again factor 10 and Dabigatran. Excuse me, sir. Guzal, sir, you are not audible. Hello. Hello. Uh, Dr. Guzal, sir. Sir, I am not here. Uh, sir, if you can close your video. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, madam. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Tata, it was. Guzal, sir, uh, will you please go back to the earlier slide? Because uh, you were not audible that time. Yes, yes. This one? Ah uh, yes sir yes sir yes yeah that this was okay the next slide see internet is not very stable on my yes, side I think so because of that oh. yes sir yes, sir, your voice, in between your voice is cracking a little bit oh, yeah, sir, yeah, yeah. so what you can really do you can just off the video so that your uh, audio will be clear you know the video uh, takes a lot of MBs yeah, yeah, yeah. in the uh, net yes 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 how to stop the video stop the video. Right, sir. Yeah. Got it. So, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Better. Yeah. Good, good. Um, my voice is full. Yeah, it's hundred percent. So basically, now we have this NOAX molecule, newer oral anticoagulant. That's called as NOAX. N O C S or N O S E S. Uh, anyway, you speak. That. Little advantages over vitamin K or predictable reduced drug to drug interaction. There's no need to monitor INR and they have a fixed dose. Therefore, reducing the administrative cost, reducing improving quality of life, improving the patient benefit to risk ratio. So, now what does this NOAX? Uh, this is again very important slide. See, this coagulation pathway, we know that the extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway, which ultimately activates factor 10 and factor 2. So, this NOAX, Rurus, and Apexiban, 
acts on factor 2 way uh, 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 and dabigatron acts on factor 3 Internet unstable, I think. Hello. Okay. Uh, Dr. Guzar, sir? Yes. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. You are audible now. नहीं Yeah, my request to all of you, please wait for a minute. Sir will be joining soon. Till that period, if you have any questions, please put in the chat box or question answer box. So that at the end of the session, we can continue with the questions. मैडम एक दफा कॉल करूं पाते हैं होता है सर जॉइन 
बोलले सर आवाज येतोय हो आवाज येतो प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज वेट फॉर फ्यू मिनिट्स जालिद पनिक सर हां जालिद सर जो हैं यस यस हेलो हां यस सर नाउ वी कैन हियर एंड वी कैन सी योर स्लाइड यस यस सॉरी एक्सट्रीमली सॉरी समथिंग हैपेंड टू द इंटरनेट इनिमीटर है Debigatron is factored to any metal region anticoagulant. This is important. Now, the important thing here to note that rivaroxaban has a single daily dosing, apexaban has twice daily dosing, and debigatron has twice daily dosing. So, and drug interactions are just very few. You can get it on net. Renal clearance is also okay. Rivaroxaban apexaban is twenty five percent, is eighty percent, and is a pro drug. so important to our, from us from clinical point of view is these are once daily dosing and these are twice daily dosing rivaroxaban once daily dosing this is herald open jo upar to hai gelya varsh bhar covid madhe it's once daily dosing and apexaban and dabigatron are twice daily dosing this is important from this slide so other things are comparative things so what are the approved clinical indications of novax hmm? primary prevention of venous thromboembolism प्राइमरी प्रिवेन्शन समझा एखाद पेशंट जॉइंट रिप्लेसमेंट है एखाद नी जॉइंट रिप्लेसमेंट है कि बेडिड पेशंट है अशा पेशंट मे जो स्ट्रोक होने कि एम्बल्यूशन होने प्राइमरी प्रिवेन्शन आता ड्रिवरोक्सेवन इज टेन मिलीग्राम वन्स डेली डेबिगेटर वन फिफ्टी मिलीग्राम नॉट ओडी इज ट्वाइस डेली एंड एपेक्सीबैन टू पॉइंट फाइव मिलीग्राम ट्वाइस डेली फॉर एक्यूट डीप वेन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ डीबीटी 15 mg twice doses kad baga naka tumhi ata indications kade fakt laksha dewa for primary prevention of venous thromboembolism in case of bed ridden patients pre operative patients post operative patient is we can give this acute treatment of dvt a dvt jhalan te je treatment deche on opd basis or ipd basis definitely you can directly start on these three molecules treatment and secondary prevention of venous thromboembolism म्हणजे डीव्हीटी होऊन व्हेनस थ्रॉम्बोमोरिझम झालंय पेशंटला पल्मरिमोरिझम झालंय तरी तुम्ही ट्रीटमेंट करू शकता विथ रिवर्सबॅन डॅबिगेटन एपेक्सिबॅन अँड स्ट्रोक प्रिव्हेन्शन इन एट्रियल फिब्युलेशन हे फोर दिज आर द व्हेरी कॉमन इंडिकेशन्स म्हणजे डीव्हीटी आहे पेशंटला ऑनली डीव्हीटी आहे किंवा डीव्हीटी अँड पल्मरिमोरिझम आहे किंवा फक्त पल्मरिमोरिझम जरी आहे तरी डेफिनेटली यू कॅन डायरेक्टली स्टार्ट दॅट पेशंट ऑन रिवर्सबॅन डॅबिगेटन ऑर अपेक्सिबॅन प्रोफेलेक्सिस फॉर डीबीटी देते अपन पेशंट डीबीटी हो प्री ऑपरेटिव पेशंट है पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव पेशंट है कि बेड रिडन पेशंट है अशा पेशंट डीबीटी हो एम्बोलिजम हो कॉम्प्लिकेशन होने वी कैन गिव दिस मॉलिक्यूल्स नो एक्स और इफ द पेशंट हैज गॉट एट्रल फिब्युलेशन 
पेशंट हॅज गॉट नॉन वॉल्युअर एट्री फिब्रेशन हे पण आम्ही खूप कॉमनली बघतो तुम्ही पण खूप कॉमनली बघत असाल वी हॅव सम डॉक्टर्स यंग डॉक्टर्स हू हॅव एट्रल फिब्रुलेशन अँड हू आर ऑन दिस मॉलिक्युल्स त्याचे इंडिकेशन खूप मोठे आहेत अजून इंडिकेशन वाढतील पण त्याचे पण डेफिनेटली दिस इंडिकेशन आर व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ डीव्हिटी ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ पल्मरेमोलिझम ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ बोल डीव्हिटी अँड पल्मरेमोलिझम ॲट द सेम टाइम दॅन प्रायमरी प्रिव्हेन्शन ऑफ डीव्हिटी प्रायमरी प्रिव्हेन्शन ऑफ पल्मरेमोलिझम अँड स्ट्रोक प्रिव्हेन्शन इन एट्रल फिब्रुलेशन ही याचे इंडिकेशन आहेत आणि खूप अवघड नाही लक्षात ठेवणं खूप सोपं आहे लक्षात ठेवणं आणि डोसिंग पण खूप अवघड नाही आहे सो रिवरक्सबाय डोसिंग इज फिफ्टीन मिलिग्राम डॉइस डेली ॲक्युट डिव्हिटीमध्ये किंवा पल्मरेमोलिझममध्ये ट्रीटमेंट अँड सेकेंडरी प्रिव्हेन्शन ऑफ पल्मरेमोलिझम इज ट्वेंटी मिलिग्राम वन्स डेली ऑर टेन मिलिग्राम ओडी डोसेस तुम्हाला कुठेही मिळतील कुठल्याही नेटवर जा तुम्ही कुठल्याही मेडिकलच्या प्रिस्क्रिप्शनवरती किंवा ड्रग चॅटवरती यू कॅन गिव्ह दिस डोसेस दिस इंडिकेशन आर व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट ओके सो नो एक्स डोसिंग इन पेशंट विथ नॉन वॉल्युअर एट्रल फिब्रेशन स्टँडर्ड डोस ऑफ रिवर ऑक्सिपॅन इज ट्वेंटी मिलिग्राम वन्स डोली लो डोसेस इन केस ऑफ ओल्ड एज इन केस ऑफ रिड्यूस क्लिअर क्लिअरन्स किंवा ज्यांना ब्लिडिंगचे चान्सेस जास्त आहेत अशा पेशंटना फिफ्टीन मिलिग्राम वन्स डेली Apexiband uh, standard dose is 5 mg twice daily the low dose is 2.5 mg twice daily and dabigatran is 150 mg twice daily and low dose is 75 uh, 110 mg twice daily so standard dose is 20 mg once daily 5 mg twice daily and 150 mg twice daily low dose kuthe kuthe vaparto apan he bagu apan criteria for low dose फक्त रिवरक्सेबन मध्ये लो डोस कधी आहे फिफ्टीन मिलिग्राम वन्स डेली क्रिएटिन क्लिअरन्स इज बिटवीन फिफ्टीन टू फोर्टी नाईन हे क्रिएटिन क्लिअरन्स याच्यामध्ये असेल किंवा कमी असेल तर गिव्ह लो डोस अदरवाईज गिव्ह स्टँडर्ड डोस अगेन इन अपेक्सिबान टू पॉईंट फायव्ह मिलिग्राम टॉईस डेली कधी वापरायचं लो डोस एज इज मोर दॅन एटी वेट इज लेक दॅन सिक्स्टी ऑर क्रिएटिन इज मोर दॅन वन पॉईंट फायव्ह हे तीन क्रायटेरिया असेल तर अपेक्सिबान टू पॉईंट फायव्ह वापर अदरवाईज यू कॅन गिव्ह फायव्ह मिलिग्राम टॉईस डेली and again dabigatran again age more than 80 concomitant use of calcium channel blocker verapamil or moderate renal impairment ahe ka patient la khub gastritis esophagitis kiwa je ulcers hai kiwa reflux ahe kiwa increase risk of bleeding asa ja asel to 110 mg twice daily vapra otherwise use 150 mg twice daily this dot should be very clear and you can safely give this novax on opd basis there's no need to refer a patient to a, a physician or to a cardiologist you can safely give these drugs with, with less side effects now for atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation khup charchat ala karan these three molecules came at the same time almost at the same time so what does the guideline says manage uh, for the, for the atrial fibrillation says huh? what is the charge we know this score charts a2 s2 charts a2 s2 was score is recommended for stroke prediction in patient with atrial fibrillation a stroke madhe kay ahe We'll not going to details of the score but if the score is zero in patient with atrial fibrillation you calculate this score chart s2 chart was score if the score is zero no need of antiplatelet or anticoagulant if the score is one anticoagulant should be considered if score is more than two or more than two definitely have to give anticoagulation the score is one then you think whether to give or not so this is important of charts was score this initially the patient la kutla dvt zalo ke pulmonary embolism zalo we used to start that patient with normal cardiac heparin and then overlap that patient with warf we have to start the patient with warf and overlap with heparin or vice versa and then to me warf ki action ali ki tumhi heparin band karta that time that was the overlapping for venous thrombomorism now switching we can do this switching in case of if you are going to use novax if you are going to use dabigatran or apexiban or rivaroxaban directly you can give dabigatran to the patient if patient is on low molecular heparin or unfunctional heparin you stop the heparin or low molecular heparin and directly give that patient novax there is no need to overlap as with warf for the action to come it needs to overlap but with novax there is no need to overlap with uh, with apexiban and rivarox again you can give oral monotherapy or with dabigatran you can give twice daily dosing so single dose drug approach is very important there is no need to first start low molecular heparin or give heparin and then to start warf and then to discontinue heparin here 
or DVT or venous thrombomerism, you can directly give a single drug, directly start from day zero, maybe to once day reducing or twice day reducing. Now going to details of this. So that was the last slide. Basically, this is regarding Novax are preferred over normal heparin or vitamin K antagonist in patients who have got DVT, in patients who have got pulmonary embolism with hypotension, or for uh, pre-prophylaxis of surgery or post-prophylaxis of DVT or this first in case of surgery. So basically, this was a very short presentation. Basically, to know the difference between what are antiplatelets and what are anticoagulants and different names of anticoagulants, the newer oral anticoagulants, which we are using it since last maybe two or three years. Yeah, I think so this was the last slide. Thank you. I'm sorry for uh, some interruption in between and we have to stick to time also. So there are few questions. Uh, I want to I have not included the slides regarding COVID and uh, Antithrombotic or antiplatelets and COVID. So, what the guideline says that there is no need to give aspirin. The patient has got mild COVID. The patient has got no comorbidities. The patient is non-diabetic, non-hypertensive, and has no comorbidities. There is no need to give aspirin. There is no need to give uh, Zaralto or Rivaroxaban in that patient. But if the patient has got comorbidities, patient has got diabetes patient is obese, patient is smoker or patient is hypertensive, definitely you give oral anticoagulant. Normally what to the practices we are giving Zaralto or Rivaroxaban 10 mg once daily for at least one month to three months. They have said, said that there is no role of aspirin, but definitely all hospitals in Pune, maybe we have got Mangeshkar or Pune hospitals or Ruby Hall, all hospitals has got a different protocol. The hospitals give both the yeah, antiplatelet as well as anticoagulant. Some hospital gives only anticoagulant, some gives antiplatelets. So we have to individualize the treatment for patient who are high risk, for patient who has already, already undergone angioplasty, or already undergone bypass surgery, or has got stroke or peripheral vascular disease. These patients need to continue their oral medications, need to continue the oral anticoagulants or antiplatelets while they are taking. But in patients, in COVID patients who, who has got diabetes or obese, has got hypertension, definitely such patients should receive Rivaroxaban 10 mg once daily for at least one to three months. Because what we are seeing now, almost all the patients which come to us with myocardial infarction, with non stellation MI or unstable angina, or some patient has got critical tubal vessel disease also, they almost are post-COVID. Almost 70 to 80 percent of patients are post-COVID. So I think that we should continue this antiplatelets or anticoagulant for at least three months, one to three months, and then continue it depending on the uh, DDAMO report and other reports. Uh, <clears throat> Any questions we can take it now? Because there are a lot of things, there may be a lot of questions because I have not included the details of each and every molecule. It's very difficult in a single lecture to take all the things. But the basic, the motto of this lecture was to understand the difference between antiplatelets and anticoagulants. And in anticoagulants also, what are newer anticoagulants? That was the important uh, thing uh, we should know from this lecture. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Gujar, sir. You precisely touched upon the, all the aspects of the anticoagulants and antiplatelets. Of course, it was a like an introductory lecture to introduction of this antiplatelets yeah. platelets and anticoagulants. And it's uh, uh, many more to uh, say about these uh, drugs. Uh, so it was an it was an excellent lecture. Uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, now we will move on to uh, question and answer session. And uh, there are a few questions in the uh, box. Yes. Question and answer box. Uh, Dr. Amrit Gundicha is uh, asking that uh, presently there are many patients with the raised D dimer. And uh, they are on the Debistar uh, one BD, and uh, this Debistar, how long it it has to be given, and uh, sh uh, should we shift the patient to the Ecosprin after the one month? Uh, I think so. If the D-dimer is quite high, D-dimer is in thousand, or we have seen patients with D-dimer of one thousand, two thousand, three thousand also after discharge, after fifteen days post COVID. So I think so. You continue Debistar if the patient is high risk, patient is more than fifty or sixty age. You definitely continue Debistar for three months. 
because we have seen that they come with events after one month usually after one month because till one month we are they are receiving anticoagulant they are receiving some form of anticoagulant maybe epigatron or uroxaban and after that we when once we stop this anticoagulant still there is if the d dimer is high there is a tendency to clot formation and upon that if the patient has got dehydration b12 deficiency d3 deficiency and definitely they land in trouble they come with acs acute coronary syndrome so i think the if patient's d dimer is high you continue antiplatelet anticoagulants for at least 3 months and then switch over to antiplatelets once d dimer come down but definitely give it for at least 3 months in this case the d dimer is high yes sir so. uh, so generally in the diabetic patient we do start the antiplatelets uh the one question is uh, regarding that the so criteria of using the anticoagulants in diabetic patients as a preventive measure to avoid further complications and what will be its duration see normally diabetes is considered as equivalent of ischemic heart disease if a patient is diabetic if one patient is diabetic and other patient has got undergone angioplasty so both are equal in treatment management so all diabetic patients should be treated as equivalent to ischemic heart disease so first i will speak of antiplatelets all diabetic patients should receive antiplatelets the diabetic patient is quite young we have seen young diabetic also in the age of 25 or 30s also in that category you do a stress test if the stress test comes negative the cholesterol is normal then there is no need to give antiplatelet but if or after 40 years of age if we have a got a patient of diabetes who is got 45 or 50 age you continue aspirin 75 mg throughout his life throughout the entire period that is uh, very sure if the patient has got diabetes you continue single antiplatelet adv for life long if the patient is allergic to aspirin you can lopinavir in that case but there is no need to give prasugril or ticagrelor or blinda in that case maybe aspirin and lopinavir and life long regarding anticoagulation if along with diabetes patient has got ischemic heart disease patient has got peripheral vascular disease then definitely single antiplatelet and rivaroxaban 2.5 mg is available now hmm rivaroxaban 2.5 mg twice daily there is compass trial where a new trial has come in such patients who has got diabetes and ischemic heart disease low dose aspirin maybe 75 or 100 mg and 2.5 mg rivaroxaban twice daily should be given in these patients to continue the further to prevent further complications but that to not in a routine diabetic patient routine diabetic patient what we see in opd you give simply antiplatelet to them but if the diabetes is associated with ischemic heart disease with stroke or peripheral vascular disease an anticoagulant but in small dose 2.5 mg rivaroxaban twice daily needs to be continued for at least 3 to 6 years the trials are for 3 years but you can continue it lifelong the third question is uh, is there need of antiplatelet in young mild symptomatic covid 19 patient without any comorbidities is there any need of antiplatelets in young usually the patient is quite young 25 years 27 years 30 years and there are no comorbidities there is the trials or guidelines has shown that antiplatelet like ecosprin are not effective in these patients so ideally should not be given what we give in, in we give in uh, we give antiplatelets in the fair that he may develop some cardiac event but in young who doesn't have any comorbidities there is no role of antiplatelet and should be avoided as far as possible uh, sir i have a question uh, on the same contest actually that uh, if a young person uh, who is having comorbidities like obesity and hypertension plus covid then uh, is it advisable to yes, give the anticoagulants to yes, such yes, people for one to three months yes 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 definitely if a young patient is there he has got obesity and hypertension definitely he is a risk of developing thrombotic events maybe dvt or maybe pulmonary embolism or some arterial events so he should be anticoagulated he should be definitely given uh, anticoagulation maybe rivaroxaban 10 mg or dabigatran 150 mg for a period of 1 to 3 months if d dimer is d dimer is normal absolutely normal you can give for one month or if the d dimer is on the higher side you can continue for 3 months
okay but do we need the monitoring for this if the no. patient put the young patient on this anticoagulants no. do, we, do we need to monitor the anticoagulation is that it doesn't require monitoring okay. there are few laboratory tests which are used the patient develops complications like intracranial bleeding mesogeal bleeding that time only we do ptinr in such patients but otherwise routine monitoring of anticoagulation is not necessary in these patients it is the beauty of these drugs okay. uh, so one more question here that is that if the debester is given a bd and for the raised d dimer and the patient developed the hematuria then how to manage such patient see if the patient uh, there is no other cause for hematuria if sonography is normal there is no clot in the bladder you reduce the dose of dabigatran to 110 mg if he is taking 150 mg we reduce to 110 mg and okay. if the patient is getting bleeding even on 110 mg you stop it there is a third version you can give 75 mg twice daily if you want to give dabistar or you can switch to a lower potency antiplatelet drug in such case but usually uh, we have seen that there are very its number is very few patient developing complications with dabistar or with novax there are very few okay the patient who gets complications are usually patients are on triple drug they are on aspirin they are on clopidogrel and they are on apodem they are they are on dabistar in such patients the risk of bleeding is more okay. sometime if we do primary angioplasty or sometime patient has got atrial fibrillation and we do angioplasty in such patients so such patients are on triple drug for one month they are on aspirin clopidogrel and dabistar for one month so in okay. such cases the bleeding risk is high after one month we stop on antiplatelet give clopidogrel and dabistar and after one year we give only dabistar okay. to prevent bleeding complications okay uh, so if the d dimer is raised can we start the river exabin yes 100% we should stop the uh, the d dimer is raised definitely we should give rivaroxaban 10 mg once daily in such patients for at least 1 to 3 months depending on d dimer level at least one month anyhow if still d dimer is on the higher side you continue it for 3 months so what is the cut off point uh, for the d dimer to start the cut off point for d dimer d dimer high uh, laboratory is saying less than 500 is normal some say that less than 6 is normal there are different range of d dimers in different laboratories but definitely if it is above the range it is high mm -hmm. if it is in thousands or 2000 3000 definitely we should give it if it is borderline The cutoff is 500. It is 550 or 600, and there are no comorbidities. Young uh, COVID patient, no comorbidities. Definitely, we can stop on aspirin only. There is no need to give rivaroxaban uh, in such patients. Okay. Uh, sir, Doctor Madhuri Zagalekar is asking any role of streptokinase or urokinase in thrombotic manifestations. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely, we have seen patients in this COVID era. young male specifically who are smokers obese having developed pulmonary embolism we have seen clots in right ventricle we have seen clots in right atrium uh, we have seen acute deep vein thrombosis or acute atrial atrial thrombosis upper limb as well as lower limb so in such cases we have to thrombolyze this patient maybe with stk streptokinase urokinase or we can give alteplase as well as uh, tenecteplase also required But definitely, this streptokinase, urokinase has role in thrombotic events, maybe pulmonary embolism or acute atrial thrombosis in, in the management, and should be given. So with the newer molecules, sir, which are more safer than these molecules, which are having a higher degree of uh, compli uh, complications. Uh, so, shall we go for the? Can we go for these molecules rather than the newer molecules? Means, see, only the contraindication till now. patient with rheumatic heart disease patient has got mitral stenosis and atrial fibrillation and patient has got a mechanical valve only in these two categories the newer molecules are not indicated right now mm -hmm. a patient la jar mvr jhala asel post mvr metallic valve ahe you can't give dabigatran or rivaroxaban in that patient in that patient we have to give warfarin or acitron mm -hmm. and in patient who has got rheumatic heart disease severe mitral stenosis and atrial fibrillation and that time still no vaccine are not indicated we have to give warfarin patient with mild mitral stenosis and atrial fibrillation we have given no vax mm -hmm. but they are still not indicated on in these two conditions severe rheumatic heart disease with atrial fibrillation and mechanical valve 
patients. Only in these two patients we give warfarin. In almost all other patients in which anticoagulation is required, we give no X. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe a few new trials will come and there will be new indications down the line. Uh, sir, Dr. Amrut Gundeja is discussing the case over here. It's a female, 40 years old COVID patient with a D-dimer 800 and she is having a menorrhagia while on treatment. So how long to continue the debut star? There is no need to give debut star in this is a young female. Mm-hmm. This is 67 years female of 40, 40 years old. Okay, this is a different case. Uh, D dimer 800. Uh, I don't treatment how to, how long to continue. I think so. For a 40 years female, if she has got menorrhagia, there is no need to give Davistar. And if she is uh, heavily diabetic or obese, then only you give Davistar at a smaller dose. Otherwise, you can just manage on aspirin. There is no need to give Davistar in a young female with a D dimer of 800. See, guidelines uh, has not given any cutoff of D-dimer. Mm-hmm. So every hospital has its own protocols. Every doctor has some uh, their protocols. But if young patient, no comorbidities, no need of anticoagulant and antiplatelets. That is it. Okay. So I don't think so in this patient, 40 years female, you should give a uh, baby star. And on that she has one menorrhagia. So definitely there's no need to give baby star. You can safely stop it. Okay. Uh, There's so the one more case here. Sorry. A 67 years female had rheumatic arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis on prednisolone 4 milligram alternate day. Mm-hmm. Last 1000 milligram BD, COVID-19 positive, 7 weeks asymptomatic. Hypertension. And she she should she and should she continue equal spin 75 milligram. Yeah, I think so. Ecospin should be given at least for three to six months. Otherwise, if uh, she has got diabetes because of steroid, prednisone around four milligrams is taking since long time, then only continue aspirin. Otherwise, you can give aspirin for three months and then stop aspirin because uh, she is a non-diabetic patient and has got only hypertension. So I don't think so. We can give aspirin for three months and then uh, discontinue it because. Uh, Again, the risk of bleeding with aspirin, if she's taking long term, she's on steroids also, is may, may be very high. Hmm? So give aspirin for three months and stop it. There's no need to give any other drug. Sir, uh, can we give the ecosprin in thrombocytopenia? No, no, no. If the platelet count is less than 1 lakh, mm-hmm. some say 50,000. If less than 50,000 is absolutely contraindicated. The platelet mm-hmm. count is less than 50,000 you can't give antiplatelets. If it is in dire situation, you can monitor the platelet count, then it's okay. Otherwise, it is less than 50,000, you should not give antiplatelets. If it is less than 1 lakh, you can give single antiplatelet. Okay. If platelet count is less than 1 lakh and patient has got ACS, or patient has got undergone angioplasty, you can give single antiplatelet. Mm-hmm. And after 1 lakh, you can give dual antiplatelet. You have to monitor the platelet count. Okay. Sir, um, uh, there is there are some questions. Uh, if the patient developed the gastritis after the uh, starting of the ecosprin or any aspirin, so can we shift the patient onto the anticoagulant immediately? Yeah. See, uh, only good question. Atta jeje molecule etat, ecosprin AV, they are all enteric coated tablet. This ecosprin comes in enteric coated tablet. Only the disprin, disprin jeje goli aste, blue hajama dete, that is non enteric coated. Got it. So, disprin normally we give in patient of MI to chew or to dissolve in water and to drink it. Disprin. But normally, we have to use ecosprin 75 litho. This is enteric coated. Enteric coated is not the stomach or delidum. They are enteric coated. They go into the small intestine and there they get dissolved. So, most of the complications of this enteric coated tablet may be microhematuria cell or upper blood cell occurs at the level of intestine, small intestine. And the gastric are spared, gastric side effects are spared. Got it. But if you give plain disprin, maybe half tablet daily or uh, one third tablet daily, it will cause more gastric side effect. Mm-hmm. If the patient develops side effect with ecosprin, you switch the patient to clopidogrel. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. It is a prodrug. It has got different mechanism of action. It is an AD preceptor antagonist. Hmm? So, the aspirin allergy as a patient, you switch out to clopidogrel, and the patient develops side effect on clopidogrel, then you think of Novax in that case if it is really indicated. Otherwise, some like diabetes patient, 40, 45 years age, ahe, aspirin allergy, if aspirin is there, so you can give clopidogrel. If the patient is got allergic to clopidogrel also, I don't think so. At this age, he should, we should give no acts, no acts to him. You just monitor him, get his routine lab done, stress test and lipid profile done regularly, and then take a decision. Oh, not really. Uh, sir, uh, Dr. Gujarati is asking any need of anticoagulants in the post vaccine state as there are a few cases of the thrombotic events after vaccination. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, again, we are seeing a lot of patients, maybe it is coincident or after vaccination, specifically or after COVID, after COVID positive, after vaccination, we are getting a lot of rhythm disturbances. When the patient has a lot of tachycardia, patient heart rate goes from 80 to 110, 120, 130, and there is sudden bradycardia, sudden tachycardia. These rhythm abnormalities are very common with post-COVID as well as after vaccination. We are getting a lot of patients with that. We have to explain the patient adequate hydration is important. And definitely anticoagulation should be given to such patients. After vaccination, there is no guidelines which says that vaccination, uh, no act should be given. Mm -hmm. But after COVID, definitely this should be given. After vaccination, I don't think so. You should give to each and every patient. Mm -hmm. When you are 45, 47, it's a patient, you have to get vaccination. So, you indication not have ideally. So, I don't think so. It should be given. Routinely to all patients who have got who are taking vaccine, right? Who are taking uh, vaccine. The patient is post COVID, and he is taking vaccine. Then definitely you can give him, but not on per uh, person who is directly taking vaccine who is not uh, otherwise COVID or non COVID should not be given for non COVID patients. Sir, um, generally the patient of DVT, we put the patient on warf and we monitor mm -hmm. the INR. Uh, particularly so uh, could you please throw some light on the INR that how it should be uh, how, how much uh, it should be uh, and how it should be maintained and monitored so usually once we started usually patient of DVT once we start him on wharf wharf action doesn't come immediately on day one and there are other factors also which are acting so we have to give heparin and wharf has to be started simultaneously on day one Maybe clexin or unfractioned heparin you can give or low mercury heparin. And once INR picks up, usually after giving warf, INR to be INR is to be checked on day three and day five. Mm -hmm. Normally upon INR day seven, which can be too late. Some patient can come with bleeding. So you have to do INR on day five. First they have sent on day three and then day five. And if the INR is good between two and 2.5, INR range is between two and 2.5, then you can stop heparin or low mercury heparin and continue warfarin and thereafter the INR is to be maintained between 2 and 2.5 and while that you should instruct the patient that you should he should not change his diet what he is taking regularly diet after the don't use the palibaji khata sale the don't use khaun there the diet with the cook changes karu naka to regularly kheto hai to ek dios khu palibaji khalli azun kai dusra medicines ghetli asa kai changes karu naka he should maintain his diet regularly that is very important. Uh, generally, the, uh, sir, uh, DBT patients may generally methiani hete, may a palavaja, atatumi manalat monki, kailan aizangat, may they stop carlas angat actually. Oh, but I know. Say DBT treatment at least three months to six months all day. The treatment is at least for three to six months. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any control over the patient. Mm -hmm. we, we are not sure whether the patient will follow that or not follow it. Sometimes he may eat, sometimes he may go outside and eat. So, in, we have to tell the patient that what do you are following diet, follow the diet, don't make drastic changes in the diet. Mm -hmm. But the season, you have to eat it, 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 you have to eat it. If you have to eat it, you have to eat it, you have to eat it, you have to eat it. You have to eat it, you have to eat it, and you have to eat it. Because you have to eat it, we can restrict him for one month. You have to eat it, you have to eat it, you have to eat it. But the patient has to be difficult to control for three months, six months. So it's uh, tell the patient to continue his same diet and then adjust the INR report accordingly. 
अच्छा। इन सच केस वी हैव स्टॉप गिविंग वॉरफेरिन नाउ वी आर गिविंग हिम रिओरक्सिबैन 15 मिलीग्राम ट्वाइस डेली और डेबिगेट्रन 150 मिलीग्राम ट्वाइस डेली इन सच पेशेंट्स सो दैट देयर इज नो रिक्वायर्ड ऑफ आईएनआर मॉनिटरिंग एंड पेशेंट इज आल्सो वेल सेटिस्फाइड ओके रिजल्ट्स आर देयर डेफिनेटली वी आर सीइंग द रिजल्ट्स सर आणखी एक प्रश्न होता की पोस्ट कोविड फेज मध्ये व्हिच इज बेटर एंटीकोआगुलेंट्स और एंटीप्लेटलेट्स डेफिनेटली एंटीकोआगुलेंट्स आर बेटर डेफिनेटली एंटीकोआगुलेंट्स आर बेटर because the risk of thrombosis risk of stroke risk of myocardial infarction or pulmonary embolisms is very high i have told initially that antiplatelets according to guidelines and many articles have said that antiplatelets have no role occur but we give in pair ki baba kahi nahi tri aspirin tar ghe baba tu kahi na ghet nasel tar so but this aspirin anti and anti aspirin and this anti antiplatelets has no role post covid what they say that definitely anticoagulant has role and should be given when it is indicated should be if the patient is high risk post covid then definitely you should give anticoagulant rather than antiplatelet okay ani uh, sir ankin ek ki if inr is more see if it crossed most of the times the patient don't follow up properly and comes after say month or so or two months and when we check the inr is 3 3.2 or sometimes the patient have hematuria or the gum bleed or somewhere at that time can we uh, uh, treat the patient on the opd level or we should immediately refer to the hospital 100% ek shot takke we can treat this patient on the opd level if patient doesn't have any bleeding if the inr goes to 5 6 or 7 also they don't have any bleeding we can treat this patient karan to inr 6 7 tancha kadhi pasun to mahit na apdala je apan blood test kalto tava kalta apdala tajya ti to 4 divas inr jaste sadha divas inr jaste we don't know so patient doesn't have an active bleeding you stop the drug repeat inr after 3 days mm-hmm. or 4 days 5 days and then see if the inr has come down you can gradually start a half dose or small dose of it mm-hmm. there's a beautiful chart i will post it on uh, whatsapp if the inr is double the normal if inr is expected 2 to 2.5 a the inr 4 cha vartike ki kay karaycha 5 cha vartike ki kay karaycha गोळी तीन दिवस थांबायची मग हाफ सुरू करायची चार दिवस थांबायची मग हाफ सुरू करायची असं त्यांनी दिलेलं आहे चार्ट ओके पण जर हिमॅच्युरिया किंवा असं काही दिसत असेल व्हिजिबल साइन्स असतील तर डेफिनेटली यू स्टॉप द वॉर्फ इमिजिएटली ऍडमिट द पेशंट ऍडमिट द पेशंट यस 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 बिकॉज सी सम पेशंट्स ऑल पेशंट हॅज गॉट डिफरंट जेनेटिक प्रोफाइल सम पेशंट डोंट ब्लीड इवन ऑफ आय आर टेन काही पेशंट आय एन आर टेन गेलं तर ते ब्लीड होत नाही चांगले असतात एकदम काही पेशंट आय एन आर टू पॉईंट फाय थ्री थ्री साडेतीन झालं तरी आयसी बेड होऊ शकत खूप डिफरन्स आहे जेनेटिक पॉलिमॉर्फिजम खूप आहे त्यामुळे जर पेशंटला हिमेचोरी असेल किंवा कुठे ब्लीड झालं असेल किंवा कंजंक्टिव कंजंक्टिव हिमरेज असेल हॅलो ऍडमिट द पेशंट यू मे नेट टू गिव्ह एफ एफ पी यू मे नेट टू गिव्ह विटॅमिन के टू दिस पेशंट विटॅमिन के इज युजली नॉट आता वापरत नाही आपण and for time being you can use vitamin k ffp to these patients because bleeding kadhi thambel we don't know ek divas lagel don divas lagel ani kudun thari bleeding cha evidence ahe to patient has got got hemorrhea hematuria he may get gi bleed he may get ic bleed so it's better to admit such patients yes sir yes sir so i think sir all the questions are over i think uh, thank you very much sir um, uh, shubhada joshi madam can we कन्क्लूड देन आर लेक्चर्स ऑन क्लोपोडोग्रेल टिकाग्लोर बट ते खूप एक्सटेन्सिव्ह होईल आणि वी कांट कॉन्सन्ट्रेट ऑन मोर दॅन ट्वेंटी मिनिट्स आपल्या लक्षात राहू शकत नाही जास्त शॉर्ट इज स्वीट सो थँक्यू व्हेरी मच गुजर सर फॉर पेशंटली आन्सरिंग ऑल द क्वेश्चन अँड नाव आय हँड ओव्हर द चार्ज टू डॉक्टर शुभदा जोशी मॅडम प्लीज थँक्यू सोनी सर गुजर सर ॲज ऑलवेज थँक्यू व्हेरी मच फॉर युअर एक्सपर्ट गायडन्स and uh, that's the reason we are we all are waiting for your lecture so thank you very much uh, thank you sony sir for excellent sharing this session and thank you our scientific uh, committee chairman dr mahesh waya and dr sanjay vas for uh, guiding us uh, thank you all the delegates for attending this session thank you all and have a great day ahead yeah thank, thank you. you thank, thank you, you uh, gpa for giving me a chance to uh, express my views and some basic things thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thanks a lot
ओ थैंक यू मैडम एक्टिविटी की तस्ते पर कोविड का काम दिया वर्षी कोई से रिस्ट्रिक्शन साले नहीं ऑनलाइन एक्टिविटी और अब 
जास्त भर दिल नाही त्यात आता आपण आठवड्यातून दोनदा ऑनलाईन स्टडी सर्कल प्रोग्राम राबवत आहोत त्याला चांगला प्रतिसाद जीपीएच्या सर्व मेंबर्स कडून मिळालेला आहे त्याबद्दल मी सर्वांचे आभार व्यक्त करतो विशेषतः जीपीए ही गेल्या तीस वर्षापासून काम करणारी संस्था आहे आणि या संस्थेत बऱ्याच लोकांचं या संस्थेच्या वाढीसाठी मार्गदर्शन प्लस योगदान लाभलेलं आहे त्यापैकीच काही लोक आज आपण येणार आहेत
हुए एंड ऑफकोर्स द लास्ट थिंग लाइक डॉक्टर नितिन जडकर से रॉन्ग आइडियाज एंड फेक पोस्ट देर आर सम रियली रियली फेक पोस्ट लाइक ईटिंग सम फायर बॉल कैन प्रिवेंट कोरोना देन ड्रिंकिंग दी काउ यूरिन प्रिवेंट्स कोरोना using those cow dung rather uh, applying cow dung all over your body and uh, taking a bath with the cow urine or the mutra ni angul karna snan karna any karna ga to all these wrong ideas even the people do not believe but uh, they may uh, use it so there are even so many uh, wrong posts sometimes the things are proper but the wrong ideas are posted like people like taking steroid there were some posts that uh, doctor doctor said advice somebody from uh, somewhere in maharashtra said that uh, take steroid uh, right from the first day take four tablets of dexamethasone for mg and give the give to the patient and so people are taking it if you know that many many people have seen in the state of maharashtra they have stopped dexamethasone at some places dexamethasone is out of stock even maybe in pune this uh, could have happened uh, but all those things there is wrong ideas even if you remember one of the doctors uh, in ahmednagar district has said that taking some uh, you know uh, the desi daru uh, can prevent corona can cure corona and he gives example of it so all these wrong ideas all these poor fake posts should be counteracted by us how we discuss so this is the awareness where we as family physician and as a body of uh, all the family physicians should do it as a medical person uh, as home isolation is the main important thing uh, day before uh, even this was uh, taken uh, this idea was accepted by government of maharashtra which we proposed that uh, if a doc if a, if a doctors private doctors uh, can treat many of the patients who are asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic at home who do not need any uh, admission so uh, uh, we we asked to uh, allow all the family physicians as well as the uh, all the uh, specialist of course to treat the patient at home and this was rather accepted day before yesterday the government of uh, maharashtra said that uh, 18 districts were now uh, they are going to uh, withdraw this facility of home isolation but uh, fortunately in pune in pune we have done a great things with uh, home isolation all many of our general practitioners have done and so uh, in pune they have uh, rather accepted to continue though the official uh, uh, statement has not come from the government of maharashtra but uh, this uh, uh, rubal agarwal who is uh, uh, rather deputy commissioner of uh, pune, pune municipal corporation has rather declared that uh, home isolation will continue in pune so for this we have to decide the eligibility that the most important thing many a times what we have seen that those who are not uh, eligible want to stay at home they have home or with conditions so they do not have the proper house at home but they just uh, push on and uh, become so we have to consider all these eligibility we have to select the patient who will uh, uh, who will go for home isolation so my request to all the gpa members we are officially allowed to make this home isolation facility everybody is allowed there is one site where we have to upload on the uh, uh, on that there is a google thing by pmc on which you can uh, apply most of uh, you must have been doing but uh, if you do not know i'll let you know uh, or uh, you can continue with this thing but promote it that is a very good thing you should promote to all your patients that we do home isolation now of course the fees can be taken online uh, you have to make yourself uh, ready all those uh, upi things like uh, google pay phone pay ptm and even the online net banking so by that you can take fees or even if you call the uh, uh, this uh, uh, your uh, uh, the relative of the patient to your clinic you can take it cash also but do it before the treatment begins because i treated uh, more than 1000 patients uh, during this uh, last uh, one and a half year but uh, many of uh, them out of them uh, around 70% have not paid so there is a huge was story you know uh, so you can get good amount of fees whatever you are charging per day per consultation you are not 
not supposed to dispense anything. Don't do it. I have seen some of the uh, many of our doctors are not just uploading. They are giving even the dispensing. Don't do that. Give a proper prescription. Uh, uh, there are the known uh, these first day investigations, which is called as Corona profile, where you have to check all those uh, things. So everybody should know what are these investigations, how to decide that the patient is eligible for that. After that, uh, check his uh, uh, oxygen level, ask him to check his oxygen level, do those, uh, 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 these uh, hemogram, ESR, uh, CRP, LDH, T-dimer, then serum peridine. Sometimes even the blood sugar we have to do or HbA1c, all these things we have to do before the uh, before beginning of the home isolation as well as on the third, seventh and tenth day or maybe on seventh or tenth day, whether he has improved or not. Then of course the routine medicine, we can prepare a prescription, the main crux of this uh, uh, home isolation that we are going to treat the patients, uh, remember, those, those who do not need medicine. They do not need any medicine. So just giving some uh, paracetamol, some vitamin C, vitamin D, is that's all. Or you can start as per the recent guideline, the ivermectin. No need of giving any antibiotic. The patient, if he's having all those uh, uh, complaints, fever and this, you can take care of. Uh, or even and sometimes they have a slight cough. You can, of course, go for HRCT or something and decide whether he needs uh, some medicines if his score is uh, within limits, no? uh, less than eight. And uh, most important thing, we have to call him daily. We are charging him as per the day because he has to uh, be uh, he has to be in home isolation under us for ten days. And for all those ten days, we have to charge. If you are charging one hundred and fifty rupees, take fifteen hundred rupees in advance. If you are charging two hundred, like that. I charge uh, 300 as my consultation fee, so I charge 3,000 rupees. Then most of the time, the patient definitely give if we ask them in uh, before. Once the treatment is over, you know. Once the uh, patient is cured, then so uh, no problem. So most of the time, 99% nothing happens. The patient does not need uh, any special thing. Just daily call. What is your oxygen? What is your pulse? If your temperature, then uh, if somebody is uh, having mild uh, hypertension, you can ask his blood pressure. Ask him to take blood pressure at home or uh, other things we have to do. Ask him to uh, explain him the six minute walk test. Uh, see whether his oxygen is going down. So you can give all those uh, good uh, talk, all those we learn in doctor-patient relationship, all those uh, uh, sweet talks and uh, con confirm that you are recovery, recovering on 10-day patient recovers. No need to uh, do any additional test after that or no need to repeat his RT-PCR. So all these things are really something. Uh, in this we can discharge the patient at the end of 10 days. In the beginning, we have to write down all those things in detail. We have to make his case paper, write down in detail on your case paper or some uh, book or uh, a diary at home. So you can do this. Sometimes some patients become very uh, serious. They suddenly need some oxygen. Their oxygen levels go down. You have to transfer them. But this happens rarely. If you select it properly, then definitely uh, this is a very good thing. So I urge all the doctors and GPA to start this facility. We'll talk about this later. We can have a group of uh, all those doctors who are ready to do home isolation. Remember, today the pandemic has gone down. The numbers have gone down. But People are saying that third wave is coming. So this is our preparedness for third wave. We'll prepare that each and every member of uh, GPA will uh, do this home, I use this home isolation facility, we'll offer this home isolation facility to all the uh, people in Pune. So that will be a really great thing. And uh, uh, if we follow their simple guidelines, if you follow it, we'll definitely uh, a very good thing which we'll do. If we do it together, the GP is offering such thing that will be again a very very important thing then of course telemedicine we have to know as uh, i'm grateful we are grateful to uh, mr deepen and uh, this digital if you uh, if you listen uh, i don't know uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, telemedicine is the future we have to know this because especially in this covid period we have to go for telemedicine we can continue our uh, practice in the morning time. Many of our colleagues have stopped going uh, in the evening 
but with telemedicine we can definitely uh, do wonders the telemedicine you can uh, have a digital platform like digital offers which is free of cost but of course uh, you have to take uh, uh, some computerized things uh, secondly uh, alternatively you can use your telephone your whatsapp video call you can take uh, the um, uh, fees on uh, these uh, upi things uh, but remember there are two very very important things which are important in telemedicine first thing whatever you examine write it down prepare a case paper a documentation is but most important because it you may need it further secondly whatever the prescription don't write just uh, don't type the uh, medicines on whatsapp and send it do a proper write down a proper a prescription on your letter pad or your chip pad where your stamp is with registration number is there write down the name and date of the patients and write down all the medicines with the proper explanation in marathi or whatever uh, the local language you can write it take a photograph and send it that is very utmost important so don't just uh, type out the uh, and send the patient uh, it may uh, cause some trouble later on so documentation and prescription which are very simple thing and which we can do we have been doing huh? right now we have been doing it for a long time but now this we should take the change of uh, change of the, the face of our practice the telemedicine telemedicine practice which will be very very important i am also trying to uh, uh, the, uh, do all those things uh, you can ask the patient to take uh, money uh, first once he pays then you can go for the telephone call and all that all these uh, platforms are very much uh, uh, important or very much uh, suitable for that then of course follow up you can charge for follow up you can send the investigation again on your uh, letter pad then the person if you think that the person is uh, needing purpose person needs some physical check up like you have to check his blood pressure or suppose you want to check his abdomen or something like that then you can definitely call by appointment to your uh, uh, your uh, uh, clinic or your office uh, a referral is of course very very important if you refer a patient on telemedicine suppose initially only on the uh, this uh, telephone call you feel that patient has to be referred you can definitely refer but send a chit on your letter pad that is the most important thing so there are so many things in telemedicine but for our general practitioner it will be a really a boon if you go so remember you are lying down your sofa and watching uh, your television show and or you are talking to your uh, 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 your children or eating something and uh, suddenly a call comes and you get the thing so at home you can earn money at home you can practice so that is very very important so remember the telemedicine we have to do everybody has to do it in future the social service of course uh, as you all know this one uh, i would like to definitely tell you that covid care center remember they uh, those who do not have uh, a facility of a special room with attached toilet bath they need Uh, and of course, are having uh, these COVID symptoms, uh, asymptomatic or very minor uh, uh, symptoms, or maybe pre-symptomatic. So these people, we have to send it COVID care center. So I would like to ask you, uh, Dr. Kolesh sir, Dr. Shubhada, why we GPA cannot start this COVID care center? Remember, today itself there are around more than fifty. Fifty, I have counted fifty. covid care centers are in pune which are owned and are run by uh, some political people most of the time some uh, uh, corporators or something but they need doctors so why gpa can not go for a covid care center in future which is not difficult we want we, all the permission part will be done by those people all the sponsorship will be done by those people all the management of the covid care center will be done by those special people we will do all the medical management and the name will be there that gpa covid care center remember this we have to do it uh, begin at uh, right now and this is the one way where we can shine we can uh, go to the public and will public will realize what is the power of general practitioner uh, see there are covid care centers from 50 to 1000 you must have seen in newspaper there are some uh, mlas have uh, done this covid care center 1000 uh, uh, 
thousand beds in the Nagar district. Why not in Pune? Why not in periphery of Pune? We can definitely do this. treat those fever and cold patients. No, we can treat, we can have our own COVID center, we can vaccinate people, we can advise them. If something happens, suppose some gets uh, untold reaction, we can definitely treat them. Nothing. We have treated it long, many times. And if you feel that uh, that is, you can uh, keep one ambulance and send it to a near uh, uh, ICU, if at all somebody gets a rare reaction, uh, some reaction, because they are very rare. 
as you all know around 16 crore of people uh, in india have been vaccinated till today out of that uh, a few hundred have got uh, some reaction but nobody died after giving injection so remember all this and uh, we can definitely start the uh, vaccination center uh, i'm sure that you must have thought on this uh, but uh, you can definitely go ahead and do, uh, do it but you make it uh, don't do it personally don't do it uh, uh, dr shivaji kolle's uh, vaccination center uh, we can go together and definitely will have a good impact on people of course uh, this is one more thing which we can do the helpline uh, which are very very essential uh, helpline for common people uh, that is very important now initially what is uh, corona what i should do was in uh, uh, the fashion was there so there were so many helplines now even the private companies are coming out with there are so many helplines for the vaccination also they can come out of that there is nothing we do not require any this toll free number or that we can just share our numbers uh, and uh, somebody can take uh, two or three of us who have some time can definitely take uh, this uh, uh, responsibility and we can start the helpline numbers we should start the post covid opds as i told in the beginning that we are the first people who observe, who treat those COVID, uh, post-COVID patients. We recognize and refer, but if we do it as a post-COVID OPD of our clinic or by GPA, if we come together, say 10, 15 uh, general practitioners in their clinic, if they start a post-COVID OPD, uh, we just declare that all those uh, uh, patients who are recovered from COVID and uh, uh, if they are afraid of some uh, this thing, they should come on the 7 day, 15 day like that with all the papers and we can definitely treat them. And of course there is no worry since he has cured. So we are not uh, getting uh, uh, the, any uh, infection from them. So it is very, very important to start the post-COVID EPD in its name. We are doing it. We are doing it. But we are doing on our own and without any uh, publicity so we can do this post covid opd uh, uh, opds helpline of course helping for the psychological support i've come come across so many of our doctor members also need it because if you know uh it's really a thing that uh, this psychological stress or even the psychiatric problems some some of uh, us have so we should uh, have some psychological support helpline uh, for the patients as well as for our uh, colleague. Uh, of course, the diet is one more thing. What diet you should take to prevent the, uh, this thing uh, in, uh, before getting corona, during corona, after corona. We can definitely start give some uh, tips on this diet. Of course, the referrals we have to do. We have to find out as GPA, because personally I have seen so many times that uh, in, in, um, some of our patients do need admission. Um, we call that hospital a good hospital. Uh, many times uh, we are uh, uh, there as a panel consultant. We are told that there is no uh, place vacant, no bed vacant. And uh, 10 minutes after that, the patient uh, calls some uh, political person and immediately he gets this. So all these things with free or moderate charges, we can do it. Uh, this uh, helpline may be with uh, or without fees. Of course, the same thing about the old age people, we have to do it. That is a need. There are some uh, uh, NGOs who need doctors, who need doctors. They will arrange all that. We'll get all this uh, again similarly on the telemedicine. We are not supposed to visit every time. So we can start on our own for the old people during this, uh, during and after this COVID. So this way we can do something extra. And service for our colleagues is also very important. Admissions for the doctors, which is a very dream that uh, uh, at some places there should be uh, uh, beds reserved for the doctors. We can definitely do it. Uh, we can have all those cultural programs for the people or not only for our members, we are doing a lot of this thing, but we can do open cultural program. We can share our experiences while treating the patients or the share experiences of our patients uh, with other people. Then, of course, the CMEs on practice management. Uh, we definitely go for so many 
very high level things about the diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, brain disease. But for the practice management session, we should go and rather uh, make our people very much aware. That's what I personally feel. Uh, even after practicing for 38 years, I still think that uh, there are some things uh, how you can do. Most of the time, these uh, things uh, uh, we have to do. So now I will come to the last point, which is very, very important, how we can do it. And we have to do it. As some of us are already doing it, uh, Dr. Shubhada, uh, of course, will accept that many of our people are doing these posters and flyers. So every time we have to announce all our programs, which are towards people, all the advices, all those things. Uh, suppose something happens, we have to, GPA has to tender its uh, advice. Suppose uh, now this new, uh, the, uh, this uh, the corona is airborne. So GPA should come out with a poster explaining right down at the, at the end that GPA Pune advised by one, two, three, four, this thing people should uh, take care. Of course, the WhatsApp messages for us is that we can do. Uh, uh, I've seen in uh, the state of Maharashtra at some places that people, rather the doctors have done the uh, WhatsApp group of uh, uh, people. Then, of course, this uh, YouTube channel, we can uh, make our own videos, GPA videos, the GPA YouTube channel. And every, but remember, well, daily we have to do something. All the video clips we have to say. We have to say in the press statements. The way which I've seen that if we take uh, a notice of uh, 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 these uh, changes as well as those uh, uh, problems of doctors and people, we should definitely go for the press statements, go for the media clips and all these with GPA every time. Don't fear. Uh, we have some uh, uh, weight uh, of our association. The general practitioners of India, general practitioners of Pune are doing this. And of course, uh, try to meet every time all those officials, the police commissioners, on, on the, every time, every time something happens, we have to call that everywhere a member of GPA should be given some kind of weightage that can be done and which has been done in past and I think that we'll keep on doing uh, as far as this uh, COVID uh, is concerned. We can do all this medical management, all the finance management, all those quiz posts, all the online courses and exams for our members. As uh, Dr. Nitin initially said that we are fed up with the WhatsApp University and all the uh, things uh, on uh, all those messages on social media, but why not we can start our own web page, our own Facebook page, uh, where we can go live via this GPA president or GPA secretary, or we have very good brains in GPA who know so many things clinically even very well, very well. We can do all these things. We can send these good messages on part of GPA that do this, do that. So that is very, very important. And we can definitely go for the online courses and exam. We can promote it for all our members. So, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, I think I've taken a little bit more time. Uh, I'm sure rather I expect, I think that uh, not uh, more the people. Uh, so thank you very much. We can ask a few questions if you have. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Bondway, sir. Uh, as usual, you have been uh, at the top when you speak. So you have highlighted uh, uh, what we go uh, and do beyond boundaries like awareness, at our own clinic levels, prevention methods by uh, enlightening our patients at our own clinic level, newer, uh, explaining the newer concepts, medicines, uh, especially you have talked about high home isolation, which uh, we have been doing, at least I and many of our general practitioners who are today listening to your talk are definitely doing this, uh, but we'll do with more better care and more uh, better understanding. Uh, you have stressed upon telemedicine, uh, which is the need of the hour. Uh, social service, uh, we can do uh, coming together. Uh, we can start a GPA, COVID care center, vaccination centers, helpline. And most important, I felt, uh, was that admission board option. That is very important because it is at the last uh, when doctors are suffering and they don't get beds. Uh, they don't get treatment and they have been 
fighting in the front line and they are being devoid of these all these facilities so that's a very good thing uh, you have suggested sir uh, thank you very much for your talk uh, we will be taking uh, questions uh, after this uh, i hope there are questions sir yeah Uh, before I get uh, questions, there are a few questions from my side, uh, which I would like to ask you. Uh, uh, which are the uh, correct, I mean, which is the right site to be uh, uh, looked into, where we can get the right information, instead of asking here and there? See, uh, Nitin, uh, you are very much right. Uh, the first thing, uh, there are two things. Uh, one is about the guidelines and new things in India. We have to see on the ICMR side. They, these people nowadays just give uh, put all those information on their side. So we have to check it regular. Or what I suggested that we can have a think bank or uh, uh, somebody uh, should be given the opportunity to look into it daily. And uh, even you can do it uh, on the, for all of us that look uh, ICMR site daily look uh, this MOHFW site daily uh, for the changes in uh, our day-to-day uh, -day problems, day-to-day -day, uh, guidelines. And secondly, about the, uh, the newer information about the medicines and all this, all our textbooks, as well as all the sites, especially the site CDC, uh, which is the uh, center of uh, disease, rather the center of disease control uh, and the prevention uh, of US, we sort of uh, their uh, health department. Uh, you can definitely go there. They give so many good uh, uh, instruction, information, which we rather come to know after some time. And uh, uh, whatever the guidelines they give, uh, we Indians uh, follow it after a month or two or even after six months. As you remember, this. Uh, 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 the airborne corona uh, prevention was given by UK uh, in the in the month of uh, March, uh, and now in the month uh, at the end of May we are uh, coming out. It was given on the third of March or something. So there are so many international journals, uh, the Lancet, the New England Journal, uh, then even these. Uh, uh, American Heart Association, American Diabetic Association, all are available on uh, 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 web, on the internet, with some, uh, of course, uh, you have to register, you have to pay something for it, but it is definitely, if we can do on behalf of uh, GPA, we can register something, we can definitely get it. And this is the way we should form a think tank. And so whatever we get, all those things, uh, that will be, uh, uh, it will be accumulated together and we can send it to the people whenever, uh, whichever is the uh, proper thing. Uh, because many of the things which are for doctors and some of the things are for the people. And what happens, there is always a jumbling on, uh, from the place side. Like remdesivir should not be, this was a, or plasma therapy should not be, those for doctors. Why people are debating on that? How you can change this thing? Okay. Uh, so all these things, we can definitely come out. But what I expect, that uh, there should be some uh, statement, some video clip from uh, information from GPA. The GPA Pune says that uh, such and things, uh, th things should be observed like that. We can come out tomorrow itself uh, with the new guidelines for the uh, airborne. This thing. People are really afraid about uh, airborne. They think that it is uh, rather... Uh, spreading through the air. It is not like that. Only the, uh, the people who are not only the coughing or sneezing, they pass these viruses. Even they exhale, even they sing, even they yawn. Uh, it, uh, the small droplets, uh, it, which uh, may uh, go up to 10 meters. And for that, the triple layer mask, keep your boots uh, <coughs> uh, airy. Uh, keep your fan on, keep your uh, windows open, all these things are the simple things. So these things we can definitely do. And uh, I'm not sure uh, you must have taken some uh, public program, program, but along with our CMEs, we should go for public program. See, nowadays this uh, 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 Zoom or other public platform are really wonderful. I've seen so many times, even without preparation, if I, when I uh, did some uh, Facebook Live, uh, I, I decided at 3 o'clock, I started at 4 o'clock, and there were a few thousand, 16,000, 17,000 people observing. So there is the power of this uh, 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 the, this uh, online uh, uh, platform. So we can use it. 
and everybody can use it but if we use it uh, from a gpa platform we can start like that every day say around four to five or every friday four to five somebody from us will talk to people there will be a live show live uh, uh, on the facebook or maybe on you youtube we can do it it is not difficult so what i mean to say collect the information and give it but give a stamp of gpa that way we also will grow and uh, our association will also grow yeah, and we'll get respect uh, we have one question sir uh, is from dr mahesh bhaiya treatment protocol for covid positive patient with no no comorbidity and with no morbidity morbidity treat uh, home isolation no oh, yes is mostly yeah see the treatment protocol are simple uh, uh, support we have to check for uh, their uh, what you say uh, oxygen level since we are treating and we have to charge we have to give something as usual you see that uh, the masala but suppose somebody has his uh, uh, you can say this uh, uh, hrct he has got cough uh, and it shows as a hrct that uh, uh, his uh, ct value is above 8 or just above 8 then you can uh, uh, check his oxygen if it goes uh, uh, nearer to 92 or 95 in base then if it goes to 95 then you have to do uh, his 6 minute walking test after 6 minute walking test if the oxygen level does not fall by 3 uh, by 3 if it falls by 3 then you have to admit him or uh, if it falls by 1 or 2 and it goes down then you can start the steroid dexamethasone tablet 4 mg you can give two tablets uh, twice daily or one tablet twice daily in addition uh, use uh, uh, oral rather the uh, inel corticosteroids budesonide which is very very effective many times i have personally given to this budesonide this thing and the patients have recovered well uh, even with uh, uh, this mild uh, ct values below 8 and uh, that is one thing uh, if somebody has diabetes you have to check uh, his uh, hba1c or fasting pp sugar in the beginning uh, uh, think about uh, starting these uh, uh, steroids uh, uh, before doing anything if he goes below uh, 95 then it's better to refer the patient or uh, uh, instead of starting steroid at home uh, because all these things uh, may bounce back suppose he gets something and again so they they become uh, rather worse very fast then uh, a patient has hypertension these are the main thing patient and hypertension or many times i have seen that patient do not know uh, in india nobody goes to the doctor and see just uh, uh, whether blood pressure is there or suppose uh, a doctor diagnoses blood pressure when he when you ask whether you have blood pressure uh, around one year back i had gone to doctor zankar he said you have got blood pressure he gave me some tablet for 3 days i have taken i his full course <laughs> so all these things are there everywhere so uh, that is very important to check his blood pressure so what i do personally suppose somebody has uh, Say uh, such thing, blood pressure or something. I ask them to go to uh, uh, some COVID uh, OPD uh, in a hospital like Dinanath or even the uh, Sayadri Hospital with our knowledge. So once you send them for checking, they will take to uh, their own care. So don't do that. Just to check, send it to your own uh, contact. Then only he comes back because we are always interested in patient coming back. So uh, do that. if the blood pressure is not controlled then definitely he needs admission on that don't take him under home addressing in other addressing suppose somebody has renal failure just don't treat him suppose somebody has some uh, completed uh, that is uh, uh, chemotherapy or something don't take him uh, take such patient there are plenty they are asymptomatic young patient do not have any comorbid conditions or if they have very mild this thing taking just a tablet Uh, uh, secondly, about the D-dimer. If the D-dimer levels are up to thousand, you can uh, take that risk. Uh, you can start them uh, plain uh, ecospin one uh, fifty mg, 
uh, and again we repeated third, seventh, tenth. Be very cautious about that. And uh, suppose if it is above one thousand, just say like it needs uh, all those uh, injectable or the uh, heparin and other uh, things. So don't treat them. So it is like that. Uh, what I say that uh, play like uh, good cricketer. Don't play. Uh, the ball which is outside of the hostel beyond your capacity beyond your reach and uh, just always duck for a bouncer then you are safe you have to you have to be you have to stay on your wicket huh? you don't get second chance suppose something happens wrong then uh, not only your reputation but of course uh, some medical legal problem may arise so this may happen uh, so there is definitely a risk in the treating uh, this uh, home isolation patient but choose them wisely otherwise just plainly say no even if they are liver regular patient can convey they are ready to go to some physician uh, in two three times this i must say and in uh, two or three patients i have done i send it to the proper uh, 